going to tell you how you can tune the Go garbage collector. In fact, more than that, I'm going to try to convince you that that's going to be a good idea. Um, I, I should explain where I'm coming from. I am not a garbage collector author. I'm not a garbage collector expert. Uh, I, I am a user of the thing, and I, I, but I, what I do like doing is optimizing programs. It's, to me, program optimization is my video game, you know, because I sit there for hours and hours and hours and try and get better at it. Um, okay, so uh, why should we care about garbage? Uh, I kind of like this picture. It's, it's a little bit, I think maybe the guy over here has the same uh, has the same kind of issue. I don't know. Um, so we need to clear out the garbage, otherwise our our memories, our program, our machines fill up. All the memory gets filled up, and um, that, that's why fundamentally you need to to do garbage collection. And and you know, speaking as someone, the the first Unix, the first machines I programmed Unix on had four megabytes of memory. Uh, and we used to run out on those. And uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, we felt very limited because we our, our AWS machines uh, where I work right now had only 32 gigabytes, and that was that was limiting. So uh, now we have even bigger machines. But you're always going to run out, so you always need to you always need to take out the garbage. Um, and this uh, I like this picture as well because. Um, the if you can keep your data on the stack, it's really easy to clean up. If you if you need if you finished with something on the stack, we just we just basically kind of move a pointer and it's gone. Um, if you need to find the garbage, it's it is like hunting through a heap like this. The garbage collector has to do a lot of work to um, to find the memory that you're not using anymore. So, um, so before we get into tuning the garbage collector, I, you know, you really should just not create so much garbage. And that's, that's a great idea that any time you can reduce memory allocation, your program is going to go faster. Uh, try to, to reduce, re reuse, recycle, get rid, of, um, get rid of just not creating it in the first place, and your program is going to go faster. But, uh, but that's not what this talk is about. That would, that would be another talk. Um, okay, let's get into uh, GC tuning. Who, who's tuned a garbage collector? Cu couple of people. Okay, so uh, put up a list of options. Seem seem familiar? These are the options in Java. Go is a little different. Uh, so what are? I'll put up a list of all the options in Go. Here we go. There is one option in Go. And now you're thinking, he's going to do a whole talk on one option? Well, let's give it a go. Um, so it is an environment variable, Go GC. Uh, it is spelt like that, if you want to write it down. In case. Um, it is typically set to a number. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into the details of um, uh, how, you know, how you set it, why you set it, when you set it uh, next. And another point I wanted to make is I am talking about the current implementation uh, as at Go 1.12. Um, it has remained, the, the behavior that I'm talking about has been the same for like three years or more. Uh, it's not likely to change very quickly, but it could change. It will change someday. So, you know, these things change. I'm going to talk about the, the specific behavior inside the garbage collector, and, uh, and that could change. So just, you know, as a, as a point of memory, um, uh, the, we're talking about where things are today and in the, in the standard uh, Go implementation. Um, so. Uh, we're going to visualize the Go heap. Uh, here it is empty, and we're going to allocate a block of memory. There we go. 
um, allocate some more memory. And uh, the, the, the typical, the best thing about a garbage collected system in general is that allocating memory is really, really fast. It's really cheap because you just kind of add to the end of, uh, of what's there before. When, when there's nothing there, we're just allocating into empty space. We're just basically um, adding a number on and, and moving on. So uh, let's go ahead and allocate some more memory. So now it's time to garbage collect. Um, so like I said before, the, the, uh, the garbage collector is going to go through all of the blocks, uh, is going to figure out which ones are no longer referenced from anywhere else. And there we go, is going to mark them as uh, free and ready to be reused. So a couple of important points. Uh, Go, Go doesn't uh, sort of squish down the, the blocks that are, that are remaining. It doesn't compact. Um, it, it just uh, leaves them where they are. So uh, when we're going to uh, allocate some more memory, um, the blocks that we're allocating are going to start filling up those gaps. It might be that you don't have a gap exactly the right size. Uh, so they might not all get used in exactly the order that they got freed in. Um, but uh, you know, Go tries to find a, a space that fits your block. Um, so another point is that Go is, is allocating these blocks in the same space all the time. There, there is only one space. There other systems like Java, for instance, is a has this idea of generations, where new stuff goes in one space and old stuff is in another space, and maybe there's more spaces. Go does not have any of that. Go just has one space and just allocates in it. And um, and that's not because the Go authors are, are lazy or stupid. Uh, there's, there's a fantastic, uh, the, the uh, IMM keynote talk, I think you can Google for it. Um, I have a link at the end, actually. Uh, is a, a fantastic explanation of all the things that they tried and didn't change. Um, so they, they basically tried all these things and couldn't get them to work any better than what's there. Um, but anyway, so, so, so here I am visualizing, uh, allocating memory. Um, so we just kind of allocate into the gaps. Sometimes we leave some gaps. Sometimes we use up the gaps. Um, we get to a certain point and we garbage collect. Uh, and uh, so this, you know, this goes on. We, we allocated a lot more memory now. Our pro programs got bigger, and uh, we garbage collect that. It's going to take more time to um, hunt down all those blocks. But uh, there we go, and uh, you know, we can carry on. We allocate. We garbage collect. That is the process. That's going on all the time in your program, and um, the work that the garbage collector does um, to hunt down all of those blocks is, is basically proportional to the number of blocks that you have and the number of references between them. And that can be uh, significant work. Hunting down all of those uh, blocks and references can take a lot of work. It, it Go does run it in the background, which, which was a significant improvement a few years ago. But it is, it is soaking up CPU from your program. Another thing is when it when it goes um, uh, walking all of the blocks through all of memory, um, there's a very subtle thing that happens. It knocks stuff out of your cache. You know, the CPU uh, has a cache, uh, typically around a few megabytes, that is the, the memory you've been using most recently and, and is a lot faster than main memory. Garbage collection um, takes things out of the cache, and that slows down your programs in, in ways that you might not notice and, and is really hard to measure. So I just want to stress that the garbage collection is going on all the time and, and, and slowing you down all the time. So uh, do less of it and, and also think about tuning it. So, um, so let's get to uh, how the tuning works, how that parameter GoGC works. Uh, I'm going to switch to a different uh, visualization. So this, this is... Um, this is like a metric over time um, of the uh, of the amount of memory allocated by the Go runtime. 
by your program using the Go runtime. Um, so, so there's this time along the um, uh, along the x-axis and uh, bytes along the the y-axis. Um, and you can visualize this if you use Prometheus, for instance. The the, the metric is go memstats heap, heap alloc bytes. Um, you can uh, you can set go debug to uh, uh, dump out the the GC stats into your log file. You can watch uh, you can watch this metric. And in, in real life, it isn't quite as neat as this. But but you know, broadly speaking, what happens is it it builds up, it hits a certain point, and it it collects all the garbage. Builds up again, hits a point, collects all the garbage. So, um, the 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 one crucial fact is um, the size that it lets it build up to. The run the go runtime is is choosing where that point is to garbage collect is equal to where it got to at the bottom of the last garbage collect. So it so it does this. Uh, it does the, the size grows up, it garbage collects it, that reaches a point, that's the minimum size that it got it down to. Um, and, and then it will allow 100% of that size to grow again, and then it'll garbage collect. And maybe, maybe it won't come down to the same point every time. This is a kind of a, uh, a cleaned up example. Um, but uh, uh, that's the, the crucial point, that's the default um, setting in Go is uh, is to go with a 100% growth, and that is the um, the Go GC parameter is is a you can set that percentage. So it defaults to 100%. Uh, the growth is the same size as the minimum, uh, and you can set that number. It's an environment variable. You can set it, uh, you know, in your on the command line, go GC equals 110. It will grow a bit bigger. Um, you can set it if you're using Kubernetes in an environment variable in the in the YAML. You can set this um, go GC parameter, and it will uh, change the behavior of the program. Okay, when might you want to do this? Well, the first. Uh, this is, is literally the first time I tuned uh, the garbage collector in, in one of my Go programs. Um, was uh, I noticed this uh, minimum size in, in my program was 20 gigabytes. And what that means is the, the garbage collector was allowing the program to grow to 40 gigabytes because it, it allows 100% growth. Um, but the, the 20 gigabytes was very, very stable. It, it, it's uh, in in uh, the context of a large monitoring system, Cortex, that I work on. The, the data st stays there for hours. Um, so I didn't actually want to devote um, 40 gigabytes to each of these programs. I, I didn't want the Go runtime to allow uh, 20 gigabytes of growth every time. I wanted, um, or you know, I thought, what, what, what I'd rather do is make it garbage collect a bit more often and uh, uh, save the memory. So uh, let's do some fancy uh, animations with the slides. Um, the, uh, so this is setting GoGC to 50. So two things happen. The program doesn't get as big, and it garbage collects more often. And, and you know, in a stable situation, setting it to 50, it'll garbage collect twice as often. Uh, maybe not exactly, but... Um, it's kind of broadly in that range. Um, if your uh, program is is garbage, I mean garbage collecting like once a minute, once every thirty seconds, it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of difference. You know, it, it depends on your your specific case, but uh, uh, you can watch those metrics as well, like how fast is it arch actually garbage collecting. If it's garbage collecting really slowly and, alloc and allowing the heap to grow really, really big, then think about reducing GoGC. Um, that is, uh, that's the first tuning example that you might want to do. Okay, what else can we tune with GoGC? 
Um, so let's switch to completely the opposite extreme. Um, cases, uh, and again, I've done this, uh, cases where the, the program runs in, in a quite a small amount of memory. I mean, in my example, 10 megabytes. But it's, it's garbage collecting like mad. It's like garbage collecting 60 times a second or something like that. And, um, and using a huge amount of CPU to, uh, to run the garbage collector so often. Um, yeah, 10 megabytes is nothing. I, 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 I would love the, uh, the go runtime to just use a bit more memory and slow down that garbage collection. So we can do that. You know, set go GC to 400. Um, program is going to get uh, four times as big. It's a percentage. Um, garbage collection is going to happen a quarter as often. Uh, in fact, you know, I might push that to a thousand or, or, or something like this. So uh, the specific case where I've done this is, is a, effectively a reverse proxy, where the, the program is not really doing anything. It's just like accepting requests and passing them on. Um, so there's no real memory uh, footprint. It's not really doing any work with the memory. It's, it's just like allocating data structures and buffers and things. And then uh, actually, the buffers are probably reused. Back to my earlier point. Well, this is this is what you do after you've uh, taken a look at profiles and tuned your actual allocation. Once once it's doing only the necessary stuff, then tune it. So um, so yeah, I specifically do this. Uh, I uh, allow the program to get a bit bigger because you know, 10 megabytes, 20 megabytes is nothing in in the in the machines that we work in, and. Um, and you can reduce the CPU usage and directly improve the, the latency of your program. Uh, you know, it actually shows up in the stats. Latency will come down. In my case, it came down like 30% faster latency. So uh, last example, what, as well as setting it to a number, you can set it to the word off. Um, why would you do that? You know, I mean, basically, what that means is it's never going to garbage collect. So the thing's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Bang! Your program will die. Um, well, if your program only ever runs for a really short time, then uh, that might be OK. It might be OK to never garbage collect. And um, so an example of a program that runs for a short time and then exits is, is the Go compiler. Uh, and we do this from time to time. We, we just turn off garbage collection. Um, you know, if, if a Go compilation can complete in a few hundred megabytes, and my machine's got four gigabytes or something like that on it, um, I can get the whole compilation to run 20 30% faster by turning off uh, garbage collection. So that's, that's my last example. This one's a little more dangerous. Um, there's a summary. Uh, GoGC, if you have a large static data set, try lowering GoGC if you have a large static data set. Try uh, raising it if you have a tiny heap and garbage collection going on all the time. And try turning it off altogether on your compilations. Give it a go.